my life started uh, in my memory when I was four. Um, my case came into foster care because of abuse and neglect by my parents. The story goes uh, that the police found me wandering through this, the streets in Chicago uh, looking through dumpsters for food. I pulled a pot of boiling water onto myself trying to get the hot dogs inside of it because I was hungry. So those are all symptoms that life, life before I came into care and into my parents' house was not really that positive. Uh, but me and my sister move in with my parents. Life was really good, you know, that when we lived with them, we really had our first birthday parties. And we spend lots and lots of time together, family time that, you know, is probably really unusual to us uh, as young people because of the life situation that we had before that. As a child, Jeremy was, first of all, really active. Second of all, um, a kinesthetic learner, and he, he needed to take everything apart to figure out how it worked. So sometimes he could put it back together and sometimes not. He, he was super into Legos and connects and cars. Again, building stuff, right? He didn't really start having, you know, trouble sort of dealing with his past until he was more middle school age. The, the traumas that I experienced as a young man, you know, they didn't go away overnight. I, there was a big part of me that wanted to really test the relationship to see, is there something that I can do that is so unlovable that you would walk away? Um, and for better or worse, uh, I, th I think I, I got what I wanted. When I turned 15, um, I left my parents' house at a gurney in handcuffs. It's not a reflection on my parents or on the, my upbringing or who I am, but really that um, we weren't getting what we needed. We weren't really getting the support that we all knew I needed. I, I think one of the first things that ended up coming as far as like services uh, was counseling from One Hope United. This therapist really approached it much differently. You know, her goal was, what are you struggling most with right now? And, and how do I give you the, the tips, tricks, and tools so that you can process through those things and you can own your emotions? That is a really powerful lesson for young people is that uh, in your life, you in fact are in control of some stuff. My worker from One Hope United said, Jeremy, why don't you get a little bit more involved? Uh, you're passionate, you could be more, you could do more, you could say more. Uh, and sort of got me involved at that time on the local youth advisory board. One of the key things that they, they start to teach us is the experiences that you have are not yours alone. There are likely other people having the same ones that you are. Do something about it. I ended up in keeping engaged with that youth board uh, and running it for six years, uh, where my whole goal was to make life better for other kids in care. Here I was, a young professional, who also had this really valuable lived experience. I knew things that no one else could possibly know about foster care. I knew the ways that things felt, the places that I lived. I knew how the system had failed me. I knew where the stumbling blocks were. So all these skills started showing themselves to me as value added, not, not I'm the token foster kid and that's why I got the job. It's I'm a really skilled person and it happens that I have a lived experience too. I saw this opportunity where I could stop pointing out where all the problems were and I could start helping create the next solutions. Part of what I hope to do with the time I have in my seat is create opportunities for people who want to do practice differently. When I think of One Hope United, you know, I do see a partner that is trying to do things differently. When there's a new type of technology available and I'm looking for a tester, I know I can turn to One Hope United and and you all jump at the opportunity to be my tester and will give us feedback that makes the system stronger. Jeremy's ability to synthesize really complicated sets of data so that uh, it can inform the conversation about the child welfare system and how it needs to evolve to serve kids better has been truly impressive. 
he's been able to come and present data in uh, chart forms in ways that has really allowed the conversation to go in a different direction and allow the system to evolve in some really innovative ways. Jeremy's just always that guy that you can depend on to just be helpful and nothing in return. He just wants to help you and he knows that where I'm at is where he's been, so. I'm very proud of him. I mean, sorry. <laughs> Um, you, you look at the things that he's been able to accomplish and I tell him all the time, all the good decisions that he makes and I'm just, I'm very grateful. I'm really proud of the fact that I found a partner who supports me in life. My beautiful wife is pretty awesome. That my family and I have found a pathway to reconnect and be stronger on the other side. I get a lot of my personal fulfillment when I show up and I can get something done for somebody. That, you know, this one young person got a better outcome and, and maybe in part is because I did something. I took action and I created change for this kid. What I wish I could do is get that sense of ownership into everybody. That you can do something. You, if we all gave just a little bit more, we could really change the society around us.